Good day guys, welcome to yet another wonderful session of learning with prep class. My name is Tutor Olalekon Israel, your prep class English tutor, and I am super excited to have you join me in today's session of learning. Now, in today's session, we will be answering questions from the JAM English 2012 past question. Remember, the purpose of this session is to help you prepare for your forthcoming JAM examination. So, without wasting much time, take a moment to subscribe to this channel. Turn on the post notification so you can be notified whenever we upload any new content. Alright, let's begin. Now we have an instruction on the screen. In each of the following questions 26 to 35. In each of the following questions 26 to 35. In this video, we will be answering just questions 26 to 30. So, in each of the following questions 26 to 30, select the option that best explains the information conveyed in the sentence. Select the option that best explains the information conveyed in the sentence. All right, let's begin. Question 26. Hardworking students must not have a finger in every pie at school. Hardworking students must not have a finger in every pie at school. Option A. Hardworking students must have a role to play in most activities in the school. Option B. Only hardworking students must participate in all activities in the school. Option C. Hardworking students do not participate in all activities in the school. Option D. Hardworking students must ask others to participate in school activities. So which of these options explains best the information conveyed in this sentence? Hardworking students must not have a finger in every pie at school. What does this mean? Now, when we say someone has a finger in every pie, to have a finger in every pie means to have an interest in or be involved in everything. To have an interest in or be involved in everything. So, as an advocate student, you cannot have a finger in every pie. You have to be focused. So, advocate students must not be involved in everything so as to maintain focus. You can't be involved in sports, but involved in every other activity in school. You must not have a finger in every pie. Select the things you want to involve yourself in so you can easily maintain focus on those things. So the answer to this question is option C. Advocate students do not participate in all activities in the school. They carefully select their activities so as to maintain focus in those activities. Right, moving on, question 27. The vice chancellor is riding the crest of the last quarter of his administration. The vice chancellor is riding the crest of the last quarter of his administration. Which of the options explains best the information conveyed in this sentence? Option A. The vice chancellor enjoys the acknowledgement of the success of his administration. Option B. The vice chancellor does not enjoy the people's criticism of his administration. Option C. The vice chancellor hopes to overcome soon the poor comments on his administration. Option D. The vice chancellor does not talk of the success in office. Which of these options explains best the information conveyed in this sentence? The vice chancellor is riding the crest of the last quarter of his administration. Now, to ride the crest, to ride the crest is an idiom that means to be experiencing a particularly joyous or successful period. To be experiencing a particularly joyous or successful period, situation or event. To be very successful for a limited period of time. So, the vice chancellor is enjoying the success of the last quarter of his administration. He is riding the crest of the last quarter of his administration. The answer to this question is option A. The vice chancellor enjoys the acknowledgement of the success of his administration. He enjoys the acknowledgement of the success of his administration. To ride the crest means to enjoy something. To enjoy the success of something. Right, moving on, question 28. She was absorbed by the courts from the church. She was absorbed by the courts from the church. Which of these options explains best the information conveyed in this sentence? Option A. She was convicted for the charge. Option B. She was blamed and charged to court. Option C. Her case was resolved by the court. Option D. She was declared free from the charge. So which of these options explains best the information conveyed in this sentence? She was absolved by the court from the charge. What does it mean to be absolved? 
to be absolved means to be declared free from guilt, obligation, or punishment. To be declared free from guilt, obligation, or punishment. This person would have been wrongly con uh, convicted, but she was absolved. So it means what she was declared free. The answer is she was declared free from the charge. She was absolved by the court from the charge. She was charged for something she did not do. But after investigations, she was absolved by the court. She was declared free from the charge. Moving on, question 29. The landlord is fond of throwing his weight about. The landlord is fond of throwing his weight about. Option A. He likes healthy exercise. Option B. The landlord is overweight. Option C. The landlord gives order to people. Option D. The landlord is respected by his tenants. Which of these options explains best the information conveyed in this sentence? The landlord is fond of throwing his weight about. Now, if someone throws their weight around or throws their weight about, they act aggressively and use their authority over other people more than they need to. They act aggressively and use their authority over other people more than they need to. So, when we say the landlord is fond of throwing his weight about, it means that the landlord gives others to people. Alright, moving on, question 30. The company ought to have issued warrants for 1 billion shares. The company ought to have issued warrants for 1 billion shares. Option A. The company has issued 1 billion shares. Option B. The management expected the company to issue more than 1 billion shares. Option C. Members of the company bought less than 1 billion shares. Option D. The company did not issue 1 billion shares. So which of these options explains best the information conveyed in this sentence? The company ought to have issued warrants for 1 billion shares. Ought to. Now, ought to is used as follows. Ought to is used to express an obligation or an expectation. So the company was is expected to, or the company was expected to have issued warrants for one billion shares because ought to is used to express an obligation or an expectation that someone should do something. When we make use of ought to, it has the same meaning as should. The company should have issued warrants for one billion shares. They ought to. It was expected of the company to have issued warrants for one billion shares. This means that the company should have issued warrants for one billion shares. The company ought to have issued warrants for 1 billion shares, but obviously they didn't, because it was something they should have. But since they didn't do it, they ought to. The company ought to, the company should have issued. That means they didn't issue 1 billion shares. So the answer to this question is option D. The company did not issue 1 billion shares. Alright, and with that we've come to the end of this wonderful session. Please. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel. If you enjoyed this video, click on the like button. Do not forget to drop your questions in the comment section. Also, share this content with your friends and loved ones. You can as well check us out on WhatsApp. Check for the link to our WhatsApp group in the description of this video. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of